I'll invite Dr. Rhonda Martins, who is a professor in philosophy and the head of the philosophy department to talk about um, talk about her department and, and the wonderful things you can learn um, with, the, with the Department of Philosophy. Thank you, Jason. Hi, everyone. I hope you can hear me well. Uh, I'm here to tell you about what you can expect to find out when you study philosophy in the University of Manitoba. You might be wondering what philosophy is, or you might think you already know, but I think it's important to approach this with an open mind because um, some of the things we study in philosophy might surprise you a little bit. What won't surprise you is that we address deep questions about the world and about ourselves. Uh, philosophy also teaches you to uh, think critically, which is something that you'll learn in any arts and humanities degree, I think. Uh, but this is something that we specialize in. So I want to give you some examples of some deep questions or foundational questions that we regularly address in our courses. So for example, uh, when do we have enough evidence to believe in a scientific theory? Or here's one that has been extremely relevant during the pandemic. How can we make rational decisions when we're dealing with incomplete information? On to something that's very personal to us inside of our own heads. What's the nature of consciousness? And do we have free will? If you think about ethics, one of the things we might discuss is whether the ends ever justify the means when we are trying to do the right thing. Also, what does a just society look like? And of particular relevance in today's uh, Canadian context, if there's a social injustice that happened in the past and the perpetrators are in the past, how do we rectify that? Get, especially given that there are still ramifications happening in the, few, in the present day, as well as of course, current <laughs> injustices. We wanna rectify those as well. But rectifying past injustices is a particularly difficult and gnarly problem. Next slide, please. Okay, so why study philosophy? There are a lot of personal and practical benefits. So on the practical side, we emphasize clear argumentation, communication, and creative problem solving, which are valuable skills in any field. And I wanna point out that uh, there are studies showing that philosophy majors perform exceptionally well on standardized tests, which are an entrance requirement for some programs. So getting into law, taking the LSAT, for example. There are also personal benefits to studying philosophy. Philosophy allows you to think about your life and how you should live it, how you can live the good life. It also involves considering how we should treat others and what sort of society we want to live in. Thinking about these questions can enrich our personal lives. Here are some degree offerings that we have in philosophy. By now, you might be used to this particular pattern. Uh, you can take a minor in philosophy or a general three-year degree in philosophy or you can take one of our uh, four-year degrees in philosophy. I just wanna say quickly what the difference is between a single major and a double major is. Um, a single major is when you're focusing primarily on philosophy, whereas a double is where you can pair a focus on philosophy with a focus in something else. So for example, you might pair philosophy in history or you might pair philosophy in psychology, um, depending on what it is you want to do once you're done with your studies. We also offer a master's program, which is generally takes two years to complete. Here are some subfields in philosophy that we cover at the University of Manitoba. We cover more than this, but I'm just focusing on these. So in ethics, we study the nature of right and wrong. Uh, we might deal with questions about medically assisted dying or censorship on the internet. With political philosophy, we'd look at how society should be organized. So for example, should we allow open immigration and what is a just wage for workers? Uh, metaphysics is a fancy way of saying the study of reality. Um, for example, if you're interested in your mind and how it works, you might wanna delve into the nature of consciousness. Are we physical beings all the way through or is there some non-physical component to what it is that we are that makes up our consciousness, makes up our internal self-awareness? Epistemology is the study of knowledge. Can we know anything for certain? And what's the difference between knowledge and opinion? You often hear people saying that they are entitled to their own opinion, right? Um, so one of the things we want to think about is what that actually amounts to. Um, and perhaps what we want to be aiming for is knowledge in addition to having opinions, which we certainly have the right to, but knowledge uh, has a more secure foundation. We also study logic. Um, 
Logic is the study of the fundamental text techniques of reasoning. And there's both a mathematical component of logic and a non-mathematical component. The mathematical component, by the way, is the foundation for modern computer science. You can also study the history of philosophy, where you get to meet some of history's greatest minds and greatest ideas. And finally, I'll just mention the philosophy of art and aesthetics. This is the study of the function of arts in life and how they communicate meaning. Next slide, please. So if you're interested in philosophy, they, we've got four introductory courses that you can take. Um, the first is called Introduction to Philosophy. It's a full year course and it covers many of the main areas of philosophy. Our other first year courses are all three credit hours and they have different focuses. So philosophy as a way of life looks at some of the uh, greatest minds and the pearls of wisdom that they have to offer us. And then we think about how we can apply that to our own lives in order to live the best life we possibly can. Then we've got introduction to logic and critical thinking. Both of those um, focus on clear reasoning and argumentation, but introduction to logic emphasizes mathematical logic more than critical thinking does. Uh, but both of those will introduce you to the, uh, the art of clear argumentation. I also want to point out that um, most of our 2000 level courses do not require that you first taken an introductory course in philosophy. And if you're in your second year of university, you can enter these directly. All right, here are some cool courses that we offer. Um, our course offerings vary from year to year, but uh, some of the courses that fill up fast are uh, Robot AI and Cyborg Ethics, uh, Philosophy of Music, Philosophy of Law, Philosophical Theories of Creativity, Philosophy of Sexuality. Um, I didn't put Human Rights in there, but that's another course that really gets a lot of students interested. Uh, philosophy of Science and the Philosophy of Discrimination, what discrimination is, what, you know, and uh, how we should deal with it. Next slide, please. Unique opportunities. So we do regularly hire students as research assistants. These are paid um, uh, positions, but we also have some uh, free events. Uh, <laughs> Um, we've got student clubs that are really active and fun. They organize conferences, movie nights, pub nights, and other events. Uh, currently, there are um, uh, park meetups where people sometimes get together and they play games and uh, organize reading groups and, and so on. Uh, you don't have to be a philosophy major to join our student clubs or to attend any of our events that are listed here on Unique Opportunities. They are available to anyone who's interested in philosophy. We also have something we call Philosophical Fridays, where on Fridays, we will invite out of town speakers to come in and give talks on their latest research. They're free um, and you can talk to the speakers one on one. We usually organize some kind of um, uh, meetup between the students and the out of town speakers. So that'll help you with any kind of networking that you wanna do. And then we also have the Ethics Slam. This is super fun. This happens once a year and uh, in uh, non-pandemic times, it happens in venues like Le Garage or the King's Head. It's a public event and you join a debate team and you're given questions. Uh, these are um, flash rounds, so that's why it's called a slam. And um, as it says here, there are no right answers, but you can still win. Some of the core skills that you can expect to learn if you study philosophy, so critical thinking, this is obviously a, a buzzword, it comes up and I, as I said before, I think you will learn critical thinking in any university course that you take. Um, and it's, uh, I can't uh, emphasize how important, overemphasize how important critical thinking is. So here we'll talk about thinking critically about the things you hear in the media, online and from other people. We also focus vigorously on constructing arguments. And this will help you not only with uh, writing essays for any of your courses, but also writing reports and giving presentations in your career. Okay, we focus on clear communication, uh, both in the verbal form and in written form. So you'll learn to present your ideas in a way that is straightforward and convincing. And then finally, we encourage self-reflection where we examine our own beliefs. And this is, this is good for life.
Next slide, please. Okay, I've just listed a few of the career paths that we've seen students uh, go on to take. If you want a more full description, uh, Career Compass, which is a University of Manitoba website that's devoted to helping students match uh, chosen careers to the kinds of courses and degrees they might take. Um, Career Compass has a longer list. I just want to highlight a few. So bioethicist, uh, professor or teacher, um, uh, human resources editor. And we've had an awful lot of students use philosophy as a pre-law degree. That's a pretty um, common trajectory for students to take, um, partly because philosophy majors perform very well on the LSAT, um, but also there's a very intimate connection between the kinds of things we study in philosophy and the kinds of things they study in law. So they focus on argumentation as well in law, as well as uh, just a, a very clear and rigorous understanding of language and its implications. We've had a lot of students also go on into education, medicine, uh, government, um, business, and in particular technology. So we have a number of students who have paired philosophy with a computer science degree. And this has allowed them to become extremely successful because you have this beautiful merging of uh, two sets of skills, right? The kind of problem solving that we teach in philosophy together with the technical skills. Um, that's really valuable in this environment. Okay, so more and more industries are recognizing the value of the skills that we teach, both in philosophy and also in the humanities and social sciences more generally. Thank you for your time.